On today's episode, we discover how to fix your MacBook Pro with our expert Sam. Hi, I'm Sam Tucker, and lately my old MacBook Pro Alicious has been a little hot and a little slow, just like me. But hey, it is coming up on seven years old now, so I think today we just go out and grab a new one. Bank, what's my balance? No. What do you mean? No balance. Oh, today we're gonna fix my old one. Welcome to how to repair your MacBook Pro without knowing how, and on the cheap. Don't worry, it's simple and dangerous. So today, to get some more performance, we're gonna be doing what the pros do, using performance enhancing substances, called thermal paste. You'll need some connections to get this stuff. Some internet connections. So go online and get yourself some quality thermal paste. I got some Arctic Silver, number five. Also, get a 1.2 millimeter pentalobe screwdriver. It's not a very common screw, but Apple uses it to literally screw you over. Get a T5, Torx screwdriver, a microfiber cloth, and don't you dare think about using macrofiber. And of course, a spudger, which is a type of Pokemon. All right now, so we're repairing a 2012 Retina MacBook Pro 15 inch. I believe this is very similar to the 15, 2015 model. Uh, don't worry if you do get your hot models mixed up, it happens to the best of us, live on stage. It was my mistake, it was on the card. Good, first things first, turn your MacBook off and turn it over. Now undo the 10 <laughs> screws on the back with the pentalobe screwdriver. Keep in mind, these two at the top are slightly shorter. Don't get them mixed up. Because again, like I said, when it comes to hot models, size does matter. Then just pull the cover off. Now under this warning label is the battery connector. You wanna gingerly pull this up to unplug the battery. It says you'll void your warranty by doing stuff like this, but we're no longer covered by Apple Care. We're covered by Apple doesn't care. Good, now that that battery is disconnected, we can peel back these rubber gaskets, if that's what they're called and take off this rubber cap on the screw here. Okay, now we definitely don't wanna forget where things go because I can't double check anything on the funk pooter. That's out of commission. In fact, most of my computers are broken. You know what, this might not be the best tutorial for you. But don't worry, we'll use the secret where we draw a diagram of the part we're taking out, the heat element here, which looks like a weird doodle on a weirder doodle. And then as we take screws out, we'll place it on the page where it goes back and hopefully nothing falls off. In fact, this might actually be a good time to let the kit eye out, out the way. All right, get your T5 Torx screwdriver and unscrew the CPU and the GPU if you have it, as well as the two screws on the end. They should unscrew pretty easily. Emphasis on should. Wow, these are stuck in there. It was a T5, wasn't it? Yeah, all right, got a couple out. Jeez, this is a workout. But some of these other ones. Mm, okay, a lot of these screws aren't coming out as easily as Luke said they would. Wheel off these screws really quickly here. What the heck are other YouTubers saying? Never do something like this without a backup machine. Well, it's a little late, Philip. Okay, at this point, you should really turn back, especially if this is your only machine and you rely on it to edit your videos and make an income. On the other hand, grab your oversized pliers and get pinching. And give those screws a pinch and a twist to loosen them. Some might be harder than others. I'm f***ed. It's important to not drop the pliers onto the motherboard, don't knock anything, and definitely don't hold it like this. Uh, uh. And maybe, oh, finally the last screw is out. Uh. Sweet heavens, never uh. again. Okay. Now lift the element from one end and wiggle it a little. Oh boy, and just have a look at that crumbly old paste with all those gaps in it. Woof, spudge that off with the flat end of the spudger. Now be careful when you do this. Probably don't touch it with your fingers. Oh, maybe you shouldn't be doing any of this here. Let me get my head in the way. Clean up the rest with the microfiber cloth until it shines. Do the same thing to the heat element. Ooh, a little discolored here. Hopefully that doesn't mean anything. Once everything is clean, it's time to apply the paste to the CPU and the GPU. Now you may not have noticed, but I'm not an expert here, so I'm not entirely sure how much to put on. But I do hear it's better to have slightly too much 
than too little. And I do not want to open this back up again. You don't have to do this, but you can help spread it a little with the pointy end of the spudger, just to be sure you get good coverage. And if you thought I put on too much pace before, well, you'll be throwing up right about now. Phew, okay, finally, put the element back on with a little bit of difficulty, put the screws back in, reflop the gaskets, give it a little fluff and blow to get rid of some dust, and find a loose cover screw in there. Oh God. Then reconnect the battery and screw the lid back on. Wow, that was easy. And now for the ultimate test, the only test that really matters, does it turn back on? Sweet, holy, funkin' hell, let it turn on. Oh, never have I heard such a beautiful boom of a noise. It's alive. Hopefully it stays alive after what I've done to it. Thinking about loading, it's like, oh, I don't know, did Sam break something? Oh, let me think. Oh, no. You can do it. It's fine. Yes. Okay. It did take longer to load. I guess it was just checking. It's like, what the heck has Sam done in this? What the... And it's just realizing, what has he done to me? All right, let's check out the performance in a chair rendering program called Cinebench. Now, before the repair, when you'd run the test, the processor would heat up and slow down to 1.7 gigahertz. And we'd end up with a score of only 703 CBs. And if you're wondering what that means, it means second last. But after the repair and letting the cat in, it hovers around the two gigahertz. And it gives us a whopping score of 831 CBs, which is third last, just ahead of ourselves. And finally, talk about something hot. I also rendered a clip of me flossing maniacally and before the repair, that would process in one minute and six seconds to just 50 cat butts in the way. Let me try that again. 58 seconds. And I tell you what, the timeline performance is way better. And that is how you repair your old MacBook Pro cheaply, but dangerously. Yes, even though I'm extremely happy with the results, if those screws don't come out easily for you, I highly recommend against doing this repair. I was pretty reckless. I was almost in tears, one slip, and I would have broken my computer and my YouTube career. Having said that, sometimes you do just get an itching for a pinching, and you gotta just take care of business. But until next time, thanks for tuning in. This is Sam Tucker saying stay funky. Sam time, signing off. Subscribe today. By the way, I have linked a couple more slightly competent uh, tutorial videos below if you are seeking to do this yourself and you want a more stress-free how-to. So check out those links as well. And my old MacBook Pro Alicious here has been a little slow and a poop. Welcome to How to Repair Blah. Ah, now the power port. Make sure your screws don't fall into the MagSafe. Now, even though I'm a Having said that, sometimes you do just get the itch. And if you use macro fiber, well, I'll see you later.